51. Traitors in the pack. Menace's point of view. I led my group to the area where Fang had said they were going to meet him, and before we arrived, I could already tell that things hadn't gone as he expected. I heard the sounds of fighting and started to run, leaving all stealth to the side, worrying only about getting there on time to help him. When we arrived, it was chaos, and it was hard to distinguish between friends and foes. Soon, I realized it was because my enforcers were fighting between them, so I knew that at least one of them had betrayed the pack. The question was, which one? I felt fearful for a moment. What if the rest of the enforcers turned on me? I wouldn't be able to fight both the enemies and the traitors. Then, I remembered what they had been telling me for so long about how I could make sure they obeyed me, and only me. Stop the rogues! I issued my alpha command. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. From what I had heard, it depended both on how strong you were as an alpha, and how much you wanted to put your will above others. It was hard for me to issue a command, because I knew firsthand how destructive it could be. But I put as much of my will behind the orders as I could, because it was important for the safety of the pack that they followed it. I was surprised to see one of the attacking wolves stop at my command, as if he was having trouble. But then, he stopped attacking the other enforcer and turned on the rogues. And I was surprised to see that the wolf that had betrayed me was still under my command. Even if he was loyal to Hunter and was doing his bidding, he was still part of the pack and had to accept me as his alpha. He would need to break from the pack and go rogue if he wished to ignore my command. Soon, the situation was back under control, and I could see clearly the rogues that had invaded the territory. What I couldn't see was Fang. I was starting to get worried, but I felt like he was safe. It wasn't as if he had been taken by the enemy. I was sure of that. Where is Fang? I asked one of the enforcers once things calmed down. One of the rogues escaped and went deeper into our territory. He went after him. He explained. I shifted. It was easier to track him in my wolf form. And soon, I found his scent and followed it. It was indeed going deep into our territory, something I didn't like, not one bit. I ran for a long time, but I knew I was getting closer. When I arrived, I found the missing Sherry and one of Fang's brothers, along with a wolf I didn't recognize, the rogue. I had shifted back to my human form, and I could tell that Fang wasn't happy with my nudity in front of the enemy even if wolves usually didn't have a problem with it, since we were used to shifting in front of each other. Can someone explain what is going on here? I asked, not bothering to fight Fang as he stepped in front of me. Well, I found Cherry. Paul said. It seems like she is planning on leaving us. Okay, but what is that rogue doing in our territory? Cherry... If you wanted to leave, you could have told me. I would have had one of our people escort you to the border, and we could have avoided this trouble. I knew there was more behind her actions, and I wasn't sure if it was of her own free will, or if Hunter was somehow forcing her to leave. As if you would have let me go, she said. You need leverage against Hunter. You are going to use my pup to force him to give himself up, she said and I could tell that she truly believed that. I had no idea how Hunter had talked her into that, but I was sure it was his doing. Why would I need that? The Uber Pack is already after him, and you are my problem only as long as you are a part of my clan. If you want to go rogue, that's not my problem. I already told you all. I would allow you to go even with your children if you wanted to, my mother could never leave because Hunter was holding me hostage. 
and I would never do that to someone else. As if we are going to believe you, Finn said. You are nothing and- Shut up, I said, and I didn't even feel guilty about the Alpha Command. It was time for him to understand what it was like. I would worry about getting too used to forcing my commands later. Right now, I had a problem to deal with. You don't like how I do things? Then you are free to leave. I'm not like your father forcing people to stay just so I can make their lives miserable. If Sherry wants to throw her life and that of her pup away, that's her right. If you want to bet on the losing team and leave this place, you can do that. I won't stop you, but you should probably ask your mother first. You are underage still. I couldn't just let him go alone, even if it was for him to join his father. As for you, I'm afraid you were trespassing, so I will have to detain you. As if you could, little thing. The rogue said, shifting into his wolf and jumping at us. Fang immediately shifted to protect me, and I let him, because I could tell he needed to do it. Paul was ready to join if he needed to. He'll be alright, I said, and I really believed that. Fang had been really caring and understanding with me, but I knew he needed to prove he was as much an alpha as me, and he needed to protect me, something that in my stubbornness and need to prove myself, I had been denying him. The rogue was huge, and he was strong, but there was no doubt in my mind that Fang was going to win. We would be able to question him and finally get to Hunter. It was then that I made a terrible mistake. I was so focused on what was going on with the fight that I forgot there were other elements to the situation. I never saw Finn getting the gun out, never saw him aiming at me. My first clue that something was wrong was when Paul pushed me down. Then, I heard the shot and saw him falling. Fang got distracted by the shot, and the rogue took the chance to charge him and bit into his neck. Finn was already aiming at me again. Stop! I yelled in my alpha voice, and he did. He completely stopped, not moving even a muscle. I doubted he was even blinking. Even the rogue seemed distracted for a moment, enough for Fang to escape the bite and get the upper hand again. I was keeping an eye on Sherry, but I doubted she would be as foolish as to try anything, and focused on Paul. You should shift, I told him. That would take care of the wound. Count. He said in a pained voice. I think there was a wolf bane on the bullet. He explained. Don't move, I said, shifting my hand and using my claws to carve into his side. Don't. You will get the wolf bane on you. He warned me, but I wasn't going to let that stop me from helping him. I dug deeper and got to the bullet. I grabbed it with the tip of my claws to avoid it from getting to me and got it out. I could hear the fighting, but I didn't have time to focus on that. I needed to help Paul. There was no way I was going to lose him, too. He is okay. Fang asked. I could hear the pain in his voice. He was badly hurt, but as I lifted my eyes to see him, I realized that the rogue was in worse condition. He better be, I said. I knew it was not a bad wound. A quick shift would fix it. But if he couldn't shift, then it could become pretty bad. I'm not going to die. Paul assured me with a chuckle. I just need some time to rest and gather myself. He tried to sit up, but he couldn't, still too weak and in pain. Wait, let us take care of this first. Then we'll take you to the pack house to recover, I said, hoping he was indeed well and that nothing would happen to him. So what is it going to be? I asked Sherry. Are you going after Hunter, or are you having your pup here? What will happen to me here? She asked, a little frightened. Nothing by my hand, but I don't know what the rest of the traitors and Hunter's team could try to do to you. 
Finn was still frozen, but he was really mad. I'm really sorry, Fang, but your brother will have to join the rogue in the dungeons, I told him. Having him free could put the pack at risk, and you know I can't risk it. I understand. He said, but I could tell he wasn't happy with the situation. I understood, but there was nothing he could say to defend his brother, since he had tried to hurt me and succeeded in hurting my beta. I couldn't lie. I say I wasn't enjoying bossing Finn around, but part of me was a little afraid of how much I was liking it and how easy it could be to get used to it. But I needed my power once more to order him to follow us, since Fang had to drag the rogue and I had to help Paul. I trusted Fang to take both the rogue and his brother to the dungeons, while I took Sherry and Paul to the clinic. I needed to make sure that Paul would completely recover, and I thought that Sherry would be safer in a place surrounded by workers than in the pack house, surrounded by people whose loyalty most likely still belonged to Hunter. Fifty-two. Family Matters. Thanks, POV. I have to pretend to be strong, but the truth is that I feel like crap. The fight with the rogue is one of the most intense fights I had ever had. For the first time, I really feared for my life, and the bites and cuts all over my body make me feel weak. I act tough and even menace buys it, but I feel ready to drop. The fact that my own brother betrayed our pack is another fact that weighs on me deeply. I'm all over the place. I feel sad, mad and disappointed of what Finn did. And to be honest, even a little scared that more of my siblings are involved. Finn is trying to fight the compulsion that is making him follow me. And I can see that for the first time he really understands the kind of power an alpha has over the members of the pack. He could break his bond to the pack and go rogue. That would make it easier for him to resist the commands. But since he is a beta, he is not strong enough to fight it off. Some strong alphas, like my father, can even impose their alpha commands on wolves, not part of their packs. We are still a few yards from the building we use as a jail, also referred to as the dungeons. When I see a group of enforcers eager to get rid of the rogue, I call to them and give them our prisoner. Please, take him to a cell. Make sure to shackle him. He will recover soon. Also, prepare another cell for Finn. He will be staying there as well. I said, and I can see their surprise, and a little bit of fear. I guess they still remember how my dad punished anyone who'd crossed any of his children. Make sure he is comfortable, but keep an eye on him, and do not let him go. As you wish, Alpha. One of the enforcers said, guiding Finn to a cell, as he was still under the Alpha command and was cooperating, even if his eyes were shooting daggers at me and everyone around him. I expected Finn to say something, but it looked like the silence command was still on. I didn't need much to see, he was pissed off about the fact. He always thought himself to be superior to Menace. But she had proved that she was a real alpha, and he was powerless to fight her. I shifted back to my wolf, shifting to human after the fight with the rogue had taken care of the worst injuries. I was hoping that shifting again would help with a few of the bad ones, so I would only have the superficial ones to take care of. I ran to the clinic, knowing I would find menace there, and that you would insist the doctor to take a look of me. That way I could get treatment without personally asking for it. That would be better for my ego. I never expected the rogue to be so strong, and it was hard for me to admit that I had been close to losing that fight. I arrived to the clinic and shifted back, got some pants from a bin and covered myself. I was exhausted and at the limits of my force. I was also starving and for a moment thought it would have been better to have gone to grab something to eat, but then I saw Menace 
and she was crying. And I knew there was nowhere else I'd rather be than right next to her, no matter how hungry or tired I was. Baby, what's wrong? I took her in my arms and she grabbed me tight. Paul still can't shift, and it seems the damage was worse than he admitted. They said they would need to operate on him. They are bringing a human doctor, since it's not the usual work the doctor here is used to. She explained, and that made sense. As shifters, we could take care of most injuries. We still had to deal with sickness and things like that, but operating must have been something they had no real experience with. Right now they have him on painkillers and are trying to wash out the wolf pain. But they are afraid it is already in his bloodstream, and it will take hours for the body to process it and naturally dispose of it. He's at risk until then. Don't worry, he will be okay. I assured her. I knew he was like a father to her. My father had already killed hers. I didn't want my brother to be responsible for taking the other. If Finn was involved, you know there is a chance that Fiona is also involved. They do everything together, and both hate me just as much. I couldn't deny she was right, but one sibling betraying me was enough. I know you won't like to detain all of your siblings, but I think we need to at least put them on house arrest until we can see if they are working with Hunter. I cannot risk the rest of the pack. I already ordered some of my men to start working on getting one of the biggest houses ready for the older ones, and a second one will be ready to house the rest of your family, with a few enforcers taking care of them. I'm sorry, but I have to worry for everyone in the pack. I could tell she was worried about my reaction, but even if it hurts, I understood her position. I get it. It needs to be done. I tried to reassure her, but I noticed her frown. Are you alright? How are your injuries? She questioned, looking at me. I shifted a couple of times. That took care of the worst of it, I said. And just like I expected, that wasn't enough for her. You were exhausted. You fought the rogue and then carried him to jail. Come, we'll get you a bed so you can rest. Bring him food. She ordered a close by a nurse. And call a doctor to take a look at him as soon as they finish with Paul. Don't worry about me, I just need some rest. And food won't hurt. I couldn't help but smile. She was worried about me. Even with Paul in critical condition, she's still worried about me. Come here. Don't you dare say you are okay. She grumbled and I followed. The bed wasn't the best, but I felt glad to not be on my feet anymore. Once I was lying down, I realized the extent of my tiredness. Don't worry for now. I will get our people to prepare everything for your sibling's move, and I will take care of that personally. I don't want you to be the bad guy with them. Once we clear them... The if was implicit, but I appreciate her not saying that. You can be the one to rescue them from the big bad she-wolf. They are my family and my responsibility. I talked to them. They lied to my face when they said they haven't had contact with my father. I still had the hard time accepting that. Maybe they didn't lie. They just bent the truth. They may have not talked to him directly. I'm thinking Sandra has something to do with all of this. She came to me and asked me to look for Sherry. I knew she knew exactly where and who she was with and wanted me there so they could kill me or maybe take me. I growled at the idea. She was right. It was something I could imagine him doing. I hated that I had been so blind as to not see the danger. I feared for my siblings, that in their blindness they would put themselves at risk. They had no idea how the real world worked. And I was confident my father would have just used them without care for what happened to them. There was no way he could fight his way out of his problems. Not with the Uber pack after him and most packs against him now that his true character had been revealed. The fact that he was recruiting rogues was just another nail in his coffin. Can I come in? Asked the shy voice and I turned to see the nurse carrying a tray with food. Of course. 
Manis ran to help her in, and they put food in front of me so I could eat. As soon as the smell of food got to me, my stomach started growling. I was starving and started eating like a beast. Manis stayed with me, serving me something to drink and staying to make sure I had everything I needed. As soon as the food was gone, I was unable to deny sleep any longer. I felt Menace's lips on my forehead, and then I was gone. Fifty-three. Hunter's Return. Menace's Point of View. I had news that Paul was stable, and after a quick checkup, the doctor assured me that Fang was just tired. I needed to make sure the rest of the pack was safe, and that meant going to confront Sandra and Fiona. I wasn't eager to do that, but I knew that it was something that needed to be done sooner rather than later. On my way there, I called Dagger to update him on what had been going on. He was near the territory, and he would be there to help interrogate the rogues we had captured, and also to help strengthen the borders. He was eager to catch Hunter, almost as much as I was. The other packs around us were also on the lookout for Hunter and his rogues. He was a risk for everyone, as long as he remained free. He was the Uber Pack's top priority at the moment. I had to admit, I felt better knowing Dagger was close by. He was someone I could trust, and I needed that. I went to the house pack and found that a few enforcers were already there. I knew that new houses for Hunter's family were ready, so I went inside and went directly to the common room, where most of them were already gathered. Did you find Sherry? Sandra asked, acting all worried and innocent. Yeah, sorry to say the trap didn't work. We have the rogues and Finn in custody. Sherry is under surveillance. I wanted to make it sound like she was also detained, but she was being protected from them. I was sure they had used her fears to manipulate her, but she wasn't guilty of more than being naive. What? Fiona jumped from her seat. You have my brother in custody? How dare you? Why did you do that? I could tell she was ready to go after my head. Not that it would work that well for her if she tried. Well, that's what happens to those who try to kill their alpha and end up almost killing the beta. I said, Your brother had a weapon with wolfbane-laced bullets. He aimed at me, but shot Paul instead. Your other brother, Fang, got hurt fighting off one of the rogues Finn was protecting. He's a traitor. The question here is, was he acting alone? Or are more of you involved? Fiona did look a little nervous, but Sandra looked smug, as if she knew something I didn't. I was confident that at least she was involved in all of this. There's no way Finn did that. Fred said. He would never hurt anyone. Seriously? Are you seriously saying that to me? I exclaimed. He has done nothing but hurt people. Since I've known him, I've been hurt by him many times. He takes pleasure on breaking others. He never hurt anyone who didn't deserve it, Fiona said, challenging. I never deserved that treatment. I have always been an alpha, unlike you. But now, I'm the alpha of this pack, and I deserve respect. Respect I haven't been getting from any of you. I've been trying to be lenient because you are my mate's family, but I can't put the rest of the pack at risk because of you. So, I'm afraid you will have to move to somewhere safe. Safe to whom? Sandra asked. Safe to the rest of the pack. After Finn's attack, we need to make sure no one else tries something like that. I will give you a few minutes to gather your things. The older ones will be leaving first. The younger ones will be last. I don't want to go, one of the youngest said. I'm sorry, it will only be for a while, and maybe you will like your new house better. 
I tried to sound cheerful, but I knew it wasn't working. I was too mad at the situation, and they were not my favorite people. You are just getting your revenge on us. You act like you are better than us, but you are no better, Fiona said. I'm better than you. Right now, I just need to see if you are, in fact, a traitor or just an awful person. I will find out if you were working with your brother or if he acted alone. Your father is a fugitive, and any help you give him is considered treason to this pack and to the Uber pack. I knew it was pointless to try to reason with any of them, but part of me just couldn't stop trying to get some sense into their heads. Things were better with Hunter, for all of us. You can't blame the kids for missing their father and the way things were before. Whatever Finn did was because things here are no longer working for us, Sandra said, trying to blame me for the situation and most likely trying to get my attention away from her daughter. If you don't like the way we do things here, then you could have left. Nothing was keeping you here. If you are so eager to be with him, you could have walked away. But you chose to stay, and that means that you have to obey the rules here or accept the consequences of your actions. And I'm sorry, but you all will be interrogated eventually. And if we find that any of you were acting with Finn, or that you knew what he was going to do, you'll have to go stay with him in the holding cell. A few of the mothers had taken their kids to start getting ready to move, but the older kids, along with Sandra, were still there. I knew that Sandra was involved somehow, and I was certain that Fiona was aware of her twins' actions, but I needed them to admit it, or to have some proof before acting, or Fang wouldn't be happy with me. I still couldn't believe how much I worried about that. I shouldn't let my feelings for him dictate what had to be done, but I did. You need to understand that you claiming this pack the way you did it can't be right, Fiona said. You just arrived and took my dad by surprise, she protested. The same way your father did. Most people say that the fight wasn't fair, but there were no proper witnesses. We only know that he won because he killed my father. My fight with Hunter was witnessed by the pack and by representatives from the Uber pack. But even if I hadn't won, that wouldn't change a thing. He would still be gone. The Uber pack investigated the situation, and they agreed that your father's actions are not right. They are willing to allow him to defend himself. They will give him a trial, but he's going down. Just because you all were spoiled and had everything you wanted doesn't mean that he didn't abuse the rest of the pack. Many people had to suffer for your lives to be the fairy tale you miss so much. That's wrong. I'm just trying to fix what was broken. You helping him, like your brother tried to do, won't change the end result. You can't save him. But he will destroy you if you get involved in his plans. I heard slow clapping and turned to find Hunter walking down the stairs. I had no idea how he had managed to get there without anyone noticing. It was true that most enforcers had been busy trying to keep the rogues at bay, and he most likely had help from his family. But still, I couldn't believe he had walked inside without me noticing. Nice speech, bitch. But no one will stop me. Hunter said. The Uber pack is looking for you. You won't be able to escape, I said to him. Warriors! I called for my enforcers, but no one came. I already took care of them, so no one will come to help you. You need to be taught a lesson, and I'm the alpha to do it. He said, his smile a little crazy looking. I defeated you once, Hunter, and I did it without having to use tricks. It will be the same if we fight again. 
Are you sure about that? He moved, and I noticed he had a gun. I moved, but he still managed to shoot my leg. I felt awful, and soon realized that the bullet was laced with wolfbane, just like the one Finn had used. Let's see what you can do now that you can't shift. He mocked me. The Uber Pack is coming here. Even if you kill me, they will stop you. I tried to sound strong, but the truth is that I was scared. Without the ability to shift, my options were limited. I won't kill you, he said. I may have to kill that traitor of my son, but not you. I still need a mate, and since your mother refused me, it only makes sense you take her place. He was crazy, completely crazy, and there was no way I would let him get away with it. He had done enough damage. I wasn't going to let him hurt anyone else. 54. Face off. Thanks, POV. I woke up, scared and disoriented, and realized it was because someone was screaming at me. Alpha, please wake up! Wake up! You have to come! Hurry! A young woman was holding the side of my bed while one of the nurses was trying to drag her away. What's going on? I asked, a little more awake. The old Alpha is back, in the pack house. And Alpha Menace is there, but the enforcers around the pack house were knocked down, and she's all alone. She explained. I had no reason to think she was lying. Her fear and desperation looked real enough. I got up and walked outside the room where I had been sleeping, and didn't see any enforcer. There should have been a few at least. Where are the enforcers that were posted here? I asked the nurse. They left. They heard of a new group of rogues trying to enter the territory, and left to face them. They thought they would be able to take care of it, so they didn't want to bother you. She explained. Did you see any rogues around the pack house? Or was my father who took care of the enforcers there? I asked the young woman. I saw him, but I'm not sure. She said, a little afraid but at the moment I wasn't sure if she was afraid of me and what I would do to her for not answering my question, or if she was afraid of my father and what he could be doing in the pack house. It didn't matter anyway. If Menace was in danger, I needed to go help her. My dad had already lost once, and I wasn't sure how he would react to another confrontation with Menace. All I knew is that she was my mate, and I would do whatever was necessary to make sure she was safe even faced my own father. As soon as I got out of the clinic, I shifted to my wolf and ran to the pack house. The food and the nap had done a lot to help me recover. I was still sore and not as strong as I could be, but I was much better already, and I was going to do everything in my power to stop whatever plan my father had. As I was getting close to the pack house, I heard a shot. I felt cold and scared. Would my father be capable of killing Menace with a gun? I didn't know what to believe anymore. I ran as if my life depended on it. Because it did. Menace was my life. I saw some enforcers passed out next to the house. But I ignored them and ran inside. Just in time to see my father holding Menace by the neck as he tried to fight him off. The smell of blood, her blood, was all I needed to know. He had hurt her. He had shot her. She was still moving, which gave me hope, but she hadn't shifted and her attempts to get free were weak, so she was hurt. I jumped on my dad, but he saw me coming. He threw menace at me, but rather than dodge, I let her hit me, so she could have something soft to land into. She moved as soon as she could, but I could see blood on her leg. She wouldn't be getting away anytime soon. I jumped just in time to intercept my dad that had also shifted into his wolf and was getting ready, too. Give me that gun! I heard Menace saying, and could see that Fiona was holding a gun and was aiming it at us. But I was sure his target was me, not our father. 
I had to focus on my fight with my dad, but I could see glimpses of Fiona moving towards Menace. He had no chance of fighting her alpha command. Even if he severed the ties with the pack, she was still too strong for him. The only chance would be if my father shifted and gave a counter command, but I was making sure to keep him too busy to even attempt something like that. No! Come here, Fiona! Give me that! I heard Sandra saying, but even if she was her mother, she was far from an alpha. There was no chance she could convince Fiona from disobeying an alpha order. You can't give her that! I saw movement, but couldn't see what was happening. I had my father coming at my throat. I was sure he wasn't going to stop. He intended to kill me. He was too far gone. I heard screaming, and I couldn't help but turn to see what was going on. And that was a big mistake, because my dad took the chance to attack. He bit my shoulder. He was going for my throat, but I managed to move at the last second. It was still a bad wound, and I was already weak. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to escape him, and no one was inclined to help. Then I heard a shot and the pressure on my shoulder lessened. I moved and saw my father bleeding and walking back. I knew he was hurt. But I was more worried about Menace, so I shifted and went to her. What happened? I could see that a few of my siblings were watching, but they were keeping their distance. Are you okay? I could see the blood on her leg, but had no idea how bad it was or if she had other wounds. I'll live. It hurts like hell, and the wolfbane is not letting me shift. But it's not that bad. I could see she was in pain, but she was putting a strong front. You have to stop Hunter until the Uber Pack gets here. You have to let him go. Fiona said. He is our father. Can't you see he's using you? I asked her. He doesn't care about us. He is too far gone to care about anyone but himself. He drove the pack to the ground and now he wants to do the same with the rest of us. Can't you see it? Right now Finn is in jail because of him. He betrayed the pack and turned on his alphas and my father came here for revenge instead of trying to free his son. And you think he cares about any of you? I asked my father's partners. He only keeps you around to have someone to distract him, but none of you really matter to him. He only loved my mom, and once she was gone, he became obsessed with a woman that wanted nothing with him. So he used all of you to distract himself, but you are expendable to him. I could see that Sandra was considering my words. She was shocked for the look of it. I had no idea what had happened before I arrived, but I could see things hadn't gone the way she wanted it to go. He is our father, our true alpha. We need to obey him. She said, but she sounded uncertain. She had moved between me and our father, helping him get away. Are you going to escape? I asked him. Are you going to leave them to suffer the consequences of your attack? We know someone helped you get in here, and that person will be punished. He was still in his wolf form, and I realized that he couldn't shift. Same way Menace was trapped in her human form. He was now trapped in his wolf form, so I wouldn't be getting any answers out of him. It was in his favor, really. He was going to get away with his lies. No one will help him again. I used my alpha powers to issue the command. I could see it was affecting people there, and Fiona was shivering. Even as she moved out of the way. I hated that I had to do it, but my father had attacked my mate, and that had crossed the line. He jumped out of a window and I hesitated. I felt like leaving Menace there was akin to leaving her in enemy territory. I wanted to avenge her, but also to keep her protected. Go after him. We can't let him escape. She said, and that broke my hesitation. I shifted once again and went after him. I was getting tired. I wasn't sure how much more I would be able to keep going. My only consolation was that he was also hurt. The shot had to be slowing him down. There was no way he could outrun me in this condition. And any hesitation I had hurting him had left me when he shot my mate. 
I caught up with him and tackled him. There were people around us, but no one was going to interfere. They weren't warriors, and most were still afraid of my dad. I knew that he wasn't going to stop fighting. If I wanted him to stop, I had to stop him. I wasn't going to kill him, he was still my dad, but I was going to make sure he wouldn't be able to get away once again. I bit his shoulder first, making sure he wouldn't be able to put any weight on it. Then I bit the back leg that wasn't shot. I didn't let go until I heard a crunch of broken bone. My father howled and growled, but I didn't care. All I cared about is that he wasn't going anywhere. We were finally going to have some justice for him. Alpha? I heard a timid voice. It was one of the younger enforcers, and he looked like he had been fighting. There's a group of outsiders wanting to come in. More rogues? I asked. No, we took care of those. It's the Uber pack. 55. Help arrived. Menace's point of view. I was worried. I told myself I didn't need to, but even if Hunter was hurt, I was afraid of what could happen to Fang. He was still recovering from the previous fight with the rogue, and I knew it would be hard for him to face his father. I still had to deal with the traitors. I gave you the chance to leave, I told Sandra. I didn't even threaten to hold your children hostage. You could have taken them with you. Join Hunter if you wanted. Why do this? Why betray the pack? I wasn't sure what I felt. I wasn't sure if I was angry or disappointed. It was all so hard and complicated. Hunter is the pack, she said. No, this was a pack before him, and it would be a better one once he's gone. He's going down anyway. Why help him? I just couldn't understand her and the others. They had already lost. Why hold up for him? Hunter will fix everything, and we will go back to how things were. He only wants to be with his family, and he wants all of us to be together like it always should have been. He doesn't care about you. He said it. He was more worried about having me, his son's true mate, than any of you. What do you think would have happened if my mother had accepted him? He would have discarded you without a second thought. He just doesn't care about you or any of the others. That's not true. He was going to name my son as his heir. He was going to finally make me his official mate, she said. But I could tell that not even she believed it. She knew it was a lie. You conspired against your alphas. You betrayed the pack. And worst of all, you put the rest of the people here at risk because you made it easy for Hunter and his rogues to attack. Many innocents will be hurt. I don't know how things went and who convinced whom. But now, thanks to this, both Finn and Fiona will have to face trial. They could become rogues because of their actions. Hunter! She started. Hunter is going down, and even if he manages to escape, his time has ended. He will pay for his crimes. The only problem here is that he's dragging you down with him, and he doesn't even care. I saw most of the kids and their mothers were watching from afar. Most of them cowered and realized I wasn't controlling my power. They were reacting to my alpha vibes. That explained why the others were so silent. I had underestimated Sandra. She was stronger than she looked if she could hold her own in front of me. I felt weak, and I was worried about Fang. I needed to know what was going on. I managed to get up and walk to my office. I shut the door and collapsed, out of their sight. I felt better behind a closed door. I needed help, so I called first the clinic to ask someone to help me with my wound. I called Dagger. He needed to know that Hunter was here. Where are you? 
I just arrived at your territory. Dagger said. I'm at the pack house, but things are crazy right now. I was shot with Wolfbane and can't shift. Then, I shot Hunter with the same gun, and he's locked in his wolf form. Fang went after him, but I have no idea if he caught him. We just asked for access to your territory. We found a few enforcers. They had just fought some rogues that are now under our custody. We are on our way. I'll look for Hunter myself, assist Fang if he needs help. You take care of yourself and leave it to us. We have your back. I felt better knowing we had backup. I was still worried about Fang, and unsure of who of our enforcers were loyal to us, and who had betrayed us to Hunter. I heard a noise, and realized that the medics were already here. I tried to get up, but my legs failed me. Come on in, I'm here at the office, I called, not understanding why my legs were not responding. Then, I noticed the blood pooling next to me. What happened? Asked the same doctor that had treated Paul. The former Alpha came and shot me. I pushed the chair away from the desk and waited for them to come to me. I was too weak to get up. They would have to fix me there. That's a lot of blood. The doctor sounded worried. I feel a little weak. It's the same kind of bullet they used on Paul. It was laced with wolfbane. I can't shift, and I feel kind of weak. I had to admit, I was getting dizzy. Even if I had endured a lot of abuse growing up, I always had my wolf to help me heal. Not being able to shift was affecting me more than I cared to admit. We will need to take you to the clinic and flush the wolfbane. But first, we need to stop the bleeding. The world started getting kind of hazy. Then, blackness started creeping into my vision, and I felt cold. I heard some shouting and realized they were talking to me. Alpha, Alpha, can you hear me? Yes, I'm right here. Of course I can hear you, I said, but I could tell the doctor was worried about something. With all due respect, Alpha Menace, you are not right. You are losing too much blood. You will need a transfusion. We need to move you into the clinic right away. Where is Fang? Having your mate close by will also help. He is after his father. I don't know where he is. I said, feeling so cold. I also wanted Fang to be there. To be able to hug me and keep me warm. I wanted him with me. Maybe he would come soon if he and Dagger managed to catch Hunter. I wouldn't mind if they killed him, but maybe Fang would? I wasn't sure. Let's get her onto the stretcher. We need to start an IV right away. It was humiliating to be carried on a stretcher, but I couldn't walk. I knew I needed them to help me, or I wouldn't be able to move. I didn't notice when we moved out of the pack house. I just realized we were already in the ambulance and that I was on my way to the clinic. I didn't like feeling so helpless. Even less, I liked that I wanted Fang to be with me. We stopped moving much faster than I expected. Were we already at the clinic? Was I losing time? I hadn't realized just how much I depended on my wolf. I was used to getting beat, but this was different. The problem was not the pain. I was used to dealing with that. It was that without my ability to shift and close my wounds, I was losing too much blood. It felt awful, and I felt so vulnerable. I was surrounded by enemies, after all. When we got out, I tried to sit up, but I got dizzy and decided to lie down again. I heard a lot of people talking and got scared, thinking we were under attack, so I tried to sit up again and saw a lot of people around the clinic, mostly familiar faces. I recognized a group of women. They were some of the mates of my enforcers. One of them approached us a little shyly. 
most of the enforcers are out, so we came to help. I couldn't believe her words. She wasn't a warrior, but I could feel her conviction. She wanted to protect me. They wanted to protect me. For the first time since I could remember, I really felt like the pack was there for me. And it was a feeling that I didn't expect to feel, but that helped me a lot. When I felt dizzy again, I didn't try to act strong. I got down and closed my eyes, ready to take some rest. I just needed a few minutes of rest, and then I would be able to go back and see how Fang was doing and what happened to Hunter. Hunter.